periodic law and periodic table. In the mid 19th century, along with the chemical information of more and more elements became available, scientists started to realize that the chemical properties of some elements are very similar. And this eventually led to the discovery of periodic law. Periodic law says that when elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number, atomic number is the number of protons, elements with similar chemical properties occur at periodic intervals. This periodic law eventually led to the discovery of periodic table. A periodic table is a table arrangement of elements. The elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number, and they are planned in such a way that elements with similar chemical properties are positioned in the same vertical columns. This is an example of a periodic table. Based on the description above, we know all the elements inside the same vertical column, they have similar chemical properties. Talking about periodic table, we have to talk a little bit about Professor Mendeleev. He was a Russian scientist, a professor in chemistry, at his time, chemistry was taught basically element by element. The students had to memorize the chemistry of each individual element. That was not an easy job to do at all. So what Professor Mendeleev was trying to do was that he was trying to construct a table like what we do when we study sometimes. Okay, when we can make a table so that it uh, puts certain things together to help us to learn or to memorize something. Okay, he was trying to make a table so that the element with similar properties will, would be grouped together. So that's what he did, constructed a table in such a way that elements with similar properties were grouped together. He actually put that table into the textbook he wrote. In his table, the elements, the elements were arranged with increasing atomic, num atomic weight. This is the first difference between his table and the current mo uh, modern uh, periodic table. The current periodic table was, uh, is arranged with the increasing atomic number, not atomic weight. Luckily, usually when atomic number increases, atomic weight also increases. So it was not a big issue for him to make the table work. He uh, arranged the elements with increasing atomic, increasing atomic weight and elements with similar chemical properties were placed together horizontally. That's another difference between his table and the current table. Current table elements were grouped vertically. He claimed elements arranged according to the size of their atomic weights show clear periodic properties. Okay, that was his claim. However, in order to make his table to work, he had to leave quite a few blank spaces into the table. He predicted that the reason that he had to insert some blank spaces was not because uh, of that the table is not right, but because some elements were yet to be discovered. And in his lifetime, three of those black spaces were actually filled. They were gallium, scandium, and germanium. Now let's come back to look at the periodic table. 
in the periodic table, each horizontal row is called a period. Right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven periods in the current table. Each vertical column is called a group. Elements in the same group or in the same column, they have similar chemical properties. There are actually two different ways to label the columns. One is going from 1, 2, 3, blah, blah, goes to 18. There are 18 columns all together. Another way is to use a Roman numeral plus capital letter A or capital letter B. So all the elements in the table are divided into A groups and B groups. We have 1A, 2A, 3A through 8A. So these are A groups. And the elements here are B groups. And 1B actually starts from here, 1B, 2B, now 3B to 8B, and yet 8B In 8B, there are actually three columns. Elements in some columns have unique names. For example, elements in column 1A, well, most of them uh, are metals except one, the first one, hydrogen. Except hydrogen, all other metals in group 1A, they are called alkali metals. Group 2A, all elements in group 2A are metals again, and they have a name. They are called alkaline earth metals. Elements in group 7A are called halogens. Elements in group 8A are called noble gases. What this slide is trying to show you is that elements in the same column or same group they have similar chemical properties. It is trying to use the charge those elements will carry when they form a compound. Okay? Well, you may not know what that means yet, but you do know, you can see that when they form these elements in the same column, when they form a compound with something else, they do behave similarly. Okay? When a metals they all they all carry one plus charge, a two A two plus, hydrogen is one negative, noble gas will not carry any charge. All the elements are either metals or non-metals. A metal is an element that has the characteristic properties of luster, thermal conductivity, electrical conductivity, and malleability. Okay. They are shiny, they are good conductors, heat, or electricity, and they can be made into different shapes. That's what it's talking about. Nanometals. A nanometal is an element characterized by the absence of those properties that belong to metals. Again, a comparison between the properties of metals and nonmetals. In the periodic table, there is a dividing line that divides all the elements into metals and nonmetals. Okay, here is the stairway. Elements on the upper right plus this one, hydrogen are nanometals. All the other elements are metals. A close in on the dividing line. Again, all of these, all of these are nanometals and all the other elements in this area, they are metals. <laughs> 